What a privilege it is to say it, to believe it, to live it. Say it with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. We always start off just making it crystal clear what it's all about. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the fourth seminar in the Life in the Spirit seminars. And next week we'll be praying for the Holy Spirit. And of course the Spirit will be poured out. Luke chapter 11, verse 13, it says, If we with all our sins know how to give our children good things, how much more will the Father give the... It would, you would think they would say give good things, because that would be the parallelism of the sentence, but he doesn't say that. How much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. That's Luke 11, verse 13. It will happen next weekend, if not, or excuse me, next week or next session, if not before. And uh, all we have to do is be open to it. We've talked about expecting it. That was our first session, first seminar. Then we talked about needing it, needing the Lord, the Savior, the Spirit. And then last session, we talked about not just expecting, not just needing, but thirsting for the Spirit. And now there's one more, one more word. We just pick one word to focus on. Repent. That's the first word we hear Jesus say in Mark's Gospel, the earliest of the Gospels. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. If we can repent right now, I've been to Life in the Spirit seminars where everybody repented on the fourth week, really opened their hearts to the Lord, and they all received the Holy Spirit before we even got a chance to pray for them. God kind of jumped the gun. But he can do that since he's God. But repentance, this is crucial. When we repent, there's no way we will not receive a new outpouring of his spirit. But if we don't, there's no way that we will receive. All right, let's pray. You ready? Let's pray right now. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Satan, we bind you. Satan, we throw you out. Jesus, right now, make us completely open to you. Completely open to you. Completely open to the Father. Oh, Lord, may we repent. Repent like we've never repented before. A baptism of repentance, an immersion in repentance. Holy Spirit, convict us of our sins. Holy Spirit, take us to the cross and show us the connection between the death of Jesus, our older brother, and the sins that we've committed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, may we just get down on our knees and say, Lord, Lord, have mercy. I repent of my sins. Lord, break our hearts. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is crucial. We must expect, we must need, we must thirst, but we must repent. Repent. Jesus tried to give the Holy Spirit at least three times that we're aware of. In John chapter 19, Jesus was hanging on the cross, and it says, He bowed his head and delivered over his spirit. John chapter 19, the death of Jesus. That is a double meaning. In the Greek, it means he died, gave over his spirit, but it also means he gave the Holy Spirit. But of course, hardly anyone received. Mary, maybe Mary Magdalene did. Maybe that will, that's why she was the first one that we know of to meet the risen Christ. But, but that was about it. And then on the first Easter night, resurrection the evening, John chapter 20, Jesus breathes on the apostles and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Did they receive it? No. How do you know? They're in the locked up in the upper room. They would not have been locked up in that upper room. They would not be afraid. They would not be bound up. Or they would not be refusing to tell the world about Jesus if they had received the Holy Spirit. So uh, they didn't receive it. Now, God, the Lord gave it. He gave the Spirit on the cross. He gave the Spirit in the resurrection. He gave the Spirit. But they did not receive. Now, of course, Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, he poured out the Spirit from on high, seated at the right hand of the Father. He was not there in his physical body anymore. His physical body was in heaven. He poured out the Spirit, and they received. So you might say, well, why did they receive then? Instead of uh, receiving on at Easter, I think at Easter would be the best time of all to receive. Well, yeah, but they didn't receive then. Excuse me. <sighs> I hope you're praying for me. Um, why did they receive then? Well, in the meantime, they repented. 
They repented of their sins. And then in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, after the early church received the Holy Spirit, uh, people at first thought they were drunk or something. Well, finally, they realized this was for real. This was something great. And what they did is they ran up to Peter and said, Hey, Peter, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How can we get in on this? And Peter, in Acts 2, in, in verse 38... Acts 2 and 38, he said, well, if you want to get in on the Holy Spirit, the main thing I've, I've learned, you must reform, or another translation, must repent and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your sins may be forgiven. Then, 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 you will receive the Holy Spirit. So you see, uh, repenting is prior to receiving the Spirit. I would encourage you to go to confession before you receive prayers for the Spirit, if at all possible. Repenting. You might say, what do I need to repent of? Well, the uh, traditional opponents of a Christian are the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we need to repent of compromise with the world, we need to repent of uh, lusting after the things of the flesh. We need to repent of obeying the devil and letting ourselves be manipulated by the evil one rather than obeying the Lord. So I think world, flesh, and devil give us uh, some, uh, some way of, of focusing our repentance. Now, I said we need to repent of compromising with the world. There are many people that go around saying they made a commitment to the Lord. We talked about that in our second seminar. If you missed it, please get that on tape. But um, they're not really committed to the Lord if they're committed to the world. Because the Lord has said very clearly in Matthew 6, you can't serve two masters. So if you think you can be both, you can't. You're just, you're just deceiving yourself. It says in James chapter 4, verse 4, that if you're the world's friend, you're God's enemy. In Philippians in chapter 3, it says that if you are set upon the cares of this world, set upon the cares of this world, Philippians chapter 3, you are an enemy of the cross. So if you think you can be in the world, and still be committed to the Lord. And a lot of people think that, even though Jesus said specifically in John 15, I chose you out of the world, not geographically, but in your heart, in your values, in your habits, in your lifestyle, out of the world, out of the world. So we need to repent of that, a worldly lifestyle. We need to repent of uh, deceiving ourselves, of thinking we can serve two masters. We need to repent of this compromise with the world. Also, we need to repent, as I said, not only of the world, but of the flesh. The flesh is, are just human desires. They're not all bad. Some of them are bad. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad some of the time. Some of them are good some of the time. Uh, it just depends. But all those worldly desires, they, those fleshly desires, those carnal desires, basically the flesh is the world inside of us you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's not the outside system that ignores Jesus as Lord. That's what the world is. But the flesh is an inside system that ignores Jesus as Lord. It's kind of the world inside of us. It's our part in the world. It's being a selfaholic, just living for self. Now, some of these worldly desires or carnal desires or human desires, they're not all bad. Some of them are bad, but not all of them. Uh, but um, they can't be our whole lives. If we make these things our whole lives, we degrade ourselves. We dehumanize ourselves. We just become like an animal. What's an animal? An animal is just a creature that basically lives to satisfy certain you know, built-in desires. And that's all there is to it. You know, an animal is happy if an animal can sleep, an animal can eat, and an animal can you know, uh, be in heat or mate breed that's all an animal's interested in but see when we live by our carnal desires 
we're, we're debasing ourselves, dehumanizing ourselves, taking ourselves out of a human type of existence into an animal existence. And we've got to repent of that stuff. We've got to repent of making the lifestyle our God instead of just an aspect of the way the Lord, the true God, works with us. Do, do, you, do you understand what I mean? So we've, uh, I've, I've found that repentance from a carnal lifestyle is a um, real opener to the Holy Spirit, a real opener to the Spirit. Now we need to repent not only of our compromise with the world, not only our lusting for the things of the flesh, but also our uh, complicity, obedience to, even slavery to the devil. We know from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, our battle is not against human forces, not even against ourselves. Our battle is against principalities and the prince of darkness and the prince of the regions above. Our battle is against demons. Our battle is against the devil, against Satan. Well, we have to uh, say, Satan, I'm not going to obey you anymore. I'm not going to be your slave anymore. I'm not going to be manipulated by you anymore. And I repent of being manipulated by you. I knew you were using me, but I accepted the bribe. I, I gave in to the fear. I, I let you confuse me. But I knew where I could get the light, but I didn't go to the light. And so I repent of letting you have control and influence in my life. That's what we got to do. When, when you repent in these three areas of the world, the flesh, and the devil, you really see some, some power and openness to receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you counter the world? Well, you counter compromise with commitment. And I don't mean some sort of um, watered-down commitment. That's just compromise. That's not commitment. That's just a euphemism, a lie for commitment. But I mean real commitment. I mean unconditional love. I mean being like Job, say, God, if every, you took everything away from me, I'd say, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Like in Habakkuk in chapter 3, he says, I don't care if there's any vine, any grapes on the vines, any sheep in the fold, any, any herd in the stalls, any olives on the trees, any figs on the trees. If I don't have nothing, if I just get shut out, I don't care. I don't care if I get shut out because I love you, Lord. I love you no matter what. I love you unconditionally. I love you. I love you. I'm committed to you. I'm not conditionally committed to you. I'm committed to you no matter what happens. If nothing ever happens that I like, I am committed to you. So you fight the compromise with the world by commitment, and I mean unconditional commitment to the Lord. You, uh, you fight the flesh by confession. Confessing our sins. Confessing our, uh, our lusts, our desires. You know, most people, when you talk to them about their carnal desires or worldly desires, instead of confessing, say, you're right, I confess, that's wrong. You know what they'll do? They'll usually be denying it. In this area of carnality, denial is part, is part of the thing. When you talk to somebody who's given in to the carnal desires of alcohol, they don't say, you're right, I confess it, that's wrong. You know what they say? Say, well, what's wrong with taking a little drink or two? You know, you, somebody's, you know, trapped in the world, in the carnal desire of smoking. And you, instead of saying, you're right, I confess, smoking's wrong. You know what they say? Well, you know, I'm not shooting people. I'm not killing people. I'm not, this ain't illegal dope. This is just a cigarette. Gosh, you know, they don't confess it. You talk to somebody about masturbation, they confess that. That's wrong. That's a carnal desire. That's wrong to give in to that. Just say, well, wait a minute, you know, all these people are out there uh, giving people AIDS and, and, and passing on all the VD and, and ripping people off and using people for pornography and, and all I'm doing is minding my own business and, and uh, I don't think it's that bad. Well, they, not, they didn't confess it, did they? They didn't confess it. And they say, well, you you got to quit living for money. And say, well, wait a minute. you got to have some money. I said, I know you have to have some money, but that's not what I was talking about. You're living for it. I said, well, you you know, I might cut back a little bit. I, I think you're just overreacting. You know, in the area of carnality, it's hard to get a confession, ain't it? You fight 
carnality with confession, you fight the world with commitment. And how do you fight the devil? With confrontation. Commitment, confession, and now confrontation. Commitment fights the world, confession fights carnality, and confrontation fights the devil. We just go up to Satan and say, in the name of Jesus, not my name, my name ain't nothing, but his name is everything, and I'm giving my life to him, so I've taken on his name. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you get out of here. In the name of Jesus, I renounce you. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all your works and all your empty promises. I have authority over you in Jesus' name. I am in authority over you because I am under the authority of Jesus Christ. I confront you, Satan, and you must flee from me. Resist the devil, and he must flee from you. James in chapter 4. So that's how you do it. That's how we express our repentance in commitment, in confession, in confrontation. And when we start moving in that kind of repentance, I'm telling you, it's just wide open, wide open for the Holy Spirit. Here we got the Holy Spirit uh, described as rivers of living water. And here we got this little this little thimble with a top on it that you'd be lucky to get an eyedropper in that. And how are you going to get these rivers of living water into this little, this little almost needle's eye opening? You can't get much water in that. Well, when you repent, the top comes off. When you repent, you open up, and you just, you just got to, Big, 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 big openness. And the, and the rivers just come pouring in, you know. But where are you right now in, in your openness to the Holy Spirit? You know, the Spirit's infinite. The Spirit's the third person of the Blessed Trinity. The Spirit's just bigger than big, you know. Where are you? Well, say, so, well, I'm about not that big. Well, it's hard to get an infinite ocean in that, in that little space. But when you repent, there you go. Repent some more. Repent some more. Wow, wow. This is, going, this is really something. You see what I mean? Uh, so open up by repenting. That's what it's all about. I'm going to ask some of the people who are sharing with us maybe to share how the Lord's worked in their life in these areas. I didn't, we don't have this all staged. We don't tell people this is what you're supposed to say ahead of time. We, we want these things to be, uh, uh, you know, not canned, but just something the Lord puts in their heart as they hear the Word of God. And we don't want to uh, program their reactions to this. We just want them to react as the Spirit leads them. So if any of our uh, uh, participants would like to share a witness about what I've been talking about, you know, please do. Anybody want to share on this? Well, we told you we didn't program them, so that's the end of that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, uh. I, I recall in my life uh, pretty much shutting the Lord out of my life and, and trying to get on with my career, my financial security. Yeah. And uh, I recall one conversation I had with my boss where um, he said basically I was going no place in the company. And yeah. it was very devastating. It was as a result of uh, being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And um, that night, I was just desperate. I, I didn't know where to turn. Everything I had worked toward has pulled out from underneath me. Uh, I got a vision of Jesus, and I, and I wasn't even thinking of Jesus. I just got a vision of him and thinking, if, if he suffered, if I'm just one person and I'm suffering this much, and he suffered for all of us, how, how much he must have loved us and, yeah. and suffered. Yeah. And somehow that was just a little tiny opening, and, uh, and he used that to draw me closer to him. And little by little, people just came into my life, and the big thing was to let go of a life filled with emptiness and sin and, and just let him do the work. I think that yeah, was the yeah. important thing, just letting him move through other people um, and, and then letting the Holy Spirit come in. Uh, eventually... I was able to turn my life over to him, um, and I was healed of the multiple sclerosis. Oh, that's, that's tremendous. 
working up to that. And so that was, you re, that that realization of of the emptiness led you to repentance. Is is that mm-hmm. that be what you would say? Yeah. And then uh, that just you know just started it and started it. You know, it's kind of it's kind of like the Lord by His grace. You know, here we got something that's kind of airtight. You know, it's just mm-hmm. it won't. You know, no way to get anything in there. And uh, and you, there's no way to pull it apart. You know, do you ever try to open something? And it just won't. There's no way you can open that. But but the Lord, by His grace, almost like getting like an ice pick or something, just penetrates that that airtight seal. And then, you know, it, it, you can just start pulling it open. And and you can really pull it way open if you want. So that's the Lord's grace. And then, but if we repent, you know, that'll it'll, it'll just open up. But if we don't, it'll just once again just close up again. You know. But any, anybody else want to share, too? Yeah, I know okay. uh, that uh, in, my, in my life, um, I, thought, I really felt I knew Jesus and had a, had a, a commitment to him. And um, I had a business where I sold it, and I came into a lot of money. And it seemed that uh, my commitment really was to financial security because it seemed that uh, no matter how much I tried to rationalize with the Lord that, that I was administrator of his money, it would seem like the tighter I would hold on to it and, and became very selfish in that part. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of led me a vision one night to where I saw my hand clutching this thing that the Lord has given me, and it became more I clutched it, the more distorted it became in my hand yeah. and with the gifts. And it draw, drew me to a realization that I didn't have that commitment, commitment to live that life that uh, Jesus wanted me to that I was saying that I was and one with that realization that the selfishness and uh, the wanting to hold on to really uh, this thing of the world uh, it wasn't until I really could repent from that that I really felt free and Praise God. and when that happened it just seemed like everything just seemed to be a natural shape amen that sounds great I, I was glad the way you expressed that because you know I think in our sin, you can kind of compare this to kind of a, a cle- uh, you know, a clenched fist. You know, just, gosh, we're just uh, so tight. You know, we just hold on to this. And, and, and this might be the picture of you and how you can receive the Holy Spirit, you know, with, with that type of, you know, there's nothing, there's no openness at all. You have to pry it open, you know. But what, what the Lord, you know, as we repent, you know, we move from this clenched fist stuff so wrapped up in ourselves and we start, you know, just opening it up and opening it up. And then, you know, this picture is a picture that would be an indication of receptivity. You know, here I am, Lord, I have open hands here. I used to have clenched fists that I was just grabbing and holding on tighter and tighter to the things of the world, the things of the flesh, the things of the devil. And the more empty they became and the more frustrated it was, I just held it tighter and tighter. And then finally I just started repenting, opening, and there I was. I was a free person. Amen. You see what I mean? Now, where are you now from a visual imagery? Are you like this? Are you just starting to open up? Or are you just wide open? If you're like this, and I don't mean with your hands, although that's a nice expression but I mean in your heart you you're going you're going to receive the spirit now uh, I don't know how you're using these videos some are seeing them week by week some are seeing them in other ways but um, between now and when you receive prayer for the spirit it's customary that the devil will just really fight you truth and nail he'll just say I'm not going to let them get that new life in the spirit because when they get that new life in the spirit they're going to blow me right out Right now, I can do what I want because they don't. The, the spirit is not. Has, they won't let the spirit show them the truth. And I can do what I, I want because they don't know the power the spirit's got for them. And I can do what I want because I got them afraid. But well, once they get the Holy Spirit, I won't be able to push them around anymore. So He's going to fight you on this. So I encourage you go to confession, and and don't and really step back from any kind of things that you know you look like you might really get kind of preoccupied with you know don't get sucked into some big messes uh, you know just try to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and 
and you're going to receive. And don't fall for any distractions, if you know, if you know what I mean. So, all right, now we're going to pray. I hope you're ready to pray now. No, not clenched fist. You can do that if you want. Say, just give the devil hell. But we're not talking about that one. <laughs> How about this one? Just open, open palms, you know, wide open hands. Say, Father, I repent. I repent of all my sins. I repent of compromises with the world. I repent of lusting for the things of the flesh, even though I've denied these things. I repent of letting the devil manipulate me. I knew he was doing it, but I let him do it because I accepted the bribe and I gave in to the fear. I repent, Lord. I go to confession. I give myself to you. I come against you, evil one. Lord, open me up. Open me completely to the Holy Spirit. We pray in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the rock that stands.